Hello everyone, my name is Maxwell Holm, and these are my Physics 2 Lab 5 slides for Physics 2212 here at Georgia Tech. So a bit of an introduction to this lab. So the purpose of this lab is to apply Faraday's law to a real life example of a magnet falling through an aluminum foil tube. We'll be using coding and our just general physics knowledge that we learn in class to calculate this real life phenomena. So we'll be using one major physics concept. We'll be using Faraday's law and of which we will be using flux, induced current, and magnetic force to apply this to our scenario. So what is our scenario? So our scenario is taking a magnet and dropping it through an aluminum foil tube. And using our knowledge of Faraday's law, we can tell that this magnet falling through the aluminum foil tube will create an induced current in the tube due to the EMFs uh, created by the changing flux of the accelerating magnet. This will, in turn, create a magnetic force in the opposite direction, slowing the magnet down. Normally, in uh, a situation not like this, we would just be able to use kinematic equations to see how fast the magnet would fall. But with this induced current, it changes things a little bit. And we'll be using coding in a little bit later part of this to actually figure out how long it will take to fall using actual stuff. But for the beginning, uh, all I actually did was a, I took a nice little tube aluminum foil, I held a magnet over it, I dropped it, took a video of it, and then scrubbed through the video to find these measurements. So I did five drops, and then taking the average of it, I got an average time of 5.1 seconds to fall through the tube. Next, I put together a nice coding uh, thing using the starter code that we were given, um, and I created this nice uh, curvy graph. Uh, it looks like a straight line, but it's not a fully straight line. Um, some other people's graphs uh, seem to be a little bit less straight, um, but uh, with my measurements, uh, even in their uh, codes, um, it actually produced this exact same graph. Uh, so I guess my measurements and that kind of stuff were a little, little weird. Um, anyways, yeah, so here's my code. Uh, so for the first part of the code, uh, created the actual like geometry of the first tube, um, and then we also created uh, the bar magnet to fall through. We set the initial conditions, then we created a nice function to calculate the magnetic field of the bar magnet, uh, then we created another function to calculate the uh, changing flux with time, uh, and then we iterated through all of this um, and <clears throat> calculated the force of gravity on the magnet, which causes it to fall down, and then we iterated through each of the um, rings to calculate the magnetic force uh, from the tube on the magnet from each of the um, rings of induced current on the tube. And then we added those together and then putting that all together we were able to create this nice uh, graph right here, this nice visual. And all together I calculated a nice result of 0 0.251 seconds to fall through the tube. So a couple what-if questions to uh, <laughs> send us on our merry way. Uh, so if the resistivity of the conductor were reduced as close to possible as zero, uh, the dynamics of the falling magnet would actually change as, uh, due to Ohm's law, we know that voltage divided by resistivity is equal to the current. So if we decrease the resistivity, then we are going to increase the current by quite a bit, thereby increasing the induced current, uh, providing a much greater slowing magnetic force on the uh, magnetic dipole. So the second one of question, is uh, what if holes or slots were cut into the tube? Uh, this would actually affect the ring currents as it would mess them up, thereby causing the magnet to fall much faster through the tube as there would be a much lower induced current. So just a couple conclusions. Uh, I really like this lab. I thought it was really cool. Um, some of our other labs, they, they were cool, but I don't know. This one just, it really got me because like uh, Faraday's Law uh, is not exactly the most intuitive. Like we just don't really see it in our day-to-day -day use. Um, but you know, being able to actually like see it applied in the real world, I just thought it was really cool. Um, but anyways, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my video and maybe learned something. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye.